Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Monday, September 30th, and oh my gosh, Hurricane Helene has really left its mark across the region. A lot of people though are asking, what about the rest of the tropics? What else is going on out there? And yeah, there's more development going on. It looks like uh, October is going to be a very active month uh, tropical wise across the Atlantic Ocean into the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. So let's first look at the outlook, the tropical weather outlook. And out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we have several systems out there. We have uh, uh, Isaac and Joyce, and we also have a new storm, Kirk. Kirk is going to develop into a major hurricane, but it's going to stay out in the Atlantic Ocean, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Only concerns there will be in the shipping lines. However, we're watching an area over here again in the Northwest Caribbean Sea and in the southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, I'm not overly concerned, but some of the models are uh, looking at this system and uh, having it, it develop. Nothing like Helene, but it's still having it develop. I'm going to take a look at that in just a minute. But what I want to show you is some of the after effects of the um, uh, Hurricane Helene and this is hard to comprehend the amount of power outages still in effect uh, across a large portion of the North Florida, all of Central Georgia into the Northwest portions of South Carolina, into North Carolina, even into Virginia and Kentucky and Southern portions of West Virginia. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, power outages occurring in Western North Carolina. Still a lot in our area of uh, Central Georgia. Uh, a lot of our counties around here still without power in many locations. And the Chatham County area, we're starting to get power back up. I had no power for two days here at my location. Uh, we got the power back on at 11 o'clock or nine o'clock on Saturday night, but um, there's the swath of still no power. And in some locations, it's gonna be a couple more days yet before power is restored in this area of South Central Georgia, Eastern Georgia, but further to the north, uh, over into the uh, North Carolina area, particularly the Asheville, North Carolina area and those counties surrounding Asheville. It's going to be days, if not weeks, perhaps months before some of those areas get power back. And, you know, the, the, the damage is just immense across that area uh, from the hurricane. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at uh, some of the rainfall that was associated with the uh, tropical system Helene. Uh, the winds were bad enough in our area. I estimated in the greater Savannah area, we had winds of 70 to 80 miles per hour. There was a report of a wind gust of 76 miles an hour at the Savannah International Airport and another one, 91 mile per hour wind gust at the Coffee Bluff Marina uh, on the far south side of Savannah. But um, about three and a half inches of rain fell in the savannah area i had six and a half inches here at my location uh further to the west it was very heavy rains across the path of the storm itself uh, six to eight inches of rain 10 inches of rain in some locations going further north into the uh north carolina area particularly western north carolina and the Asheville area tremendous amounts of rain falling in the higher terrains of the uh, Allegheny Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains rather, and uh, that's producing uh, produced a tremendous amount of flash flooding and mudslides and producing tremendous amount of damage. And looking at the um, uh, rainfall uh, into further west into central Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, moderate to heavy rains there as well, four to six inches of rain common across many areas, but Asheville, North Carolina, about 12 inches of rain falling there. And uh, just to the south and east, even higher amounts, perhaps up to 15, 16 inches of rain. I heard one report, uh, Red Woman report, 19 inches of rain in these portons, portions of the uh, elevations of North Carolina, uh, and into the almost into Tennessee right in that area there so uh, if there's any way you can help uh, if, if you want to add some financial help these people are really really need help it is just so widespread damage and some of these towns are gone it seems like it might be gone forever
This also includes the northern portions of Florida in and around the Big Bend area and Stein Hatchie and those regions as well. All right, let's look at what's going on in the tropics right now. Here's the computer model, the global forecast system, and it shows several tropical waves out in the tropical Atlantic Ocean, but all these will be curving off to the north, not affecting us whatsoever. Keeping an eye on this system over here in the uh, Caribbean Sea. So let's take a look at that and uh, right now, the global forecast system is not really picking up anything major out of this. Perhaps a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm that could develop out of this. But as going into um, uh, through the weekend, I, a weak tropical wave trying to develop there, but nothing of any significance. So, uh, you know, according to the GFS, I'm not overly concerned. But let's take a look at the uh, uh, the icon model, the German model. And it shows something developing in the western Gulf of Mexico, then sliding off toward the east, remaining in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, uh, south of the Georgia and South Carolina area. And then if we look at the Canadian model, the CMC, uh, let's take a look at it right there. And it shows the system, well, getting a little bit better organized and a little bit further south yet, uh, over in the of southeast Florida. Uh, then moving across the peninsula of Florida into the Atlantic Ocean. And there is the next system that could be developing. That could be Leslie. Uh, and, and, and another system behind that could become Milton. But uh, right now, we we'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm not yet too concerned about any other additional threats. What about the ECMWF? Well, the uh, Data is just coming in. Let's see if it's here yet, uh, the ECMWF, and nope, that was this morning. I can look at the FAST ECMWF, which is a little different, but uh, it shows basically, um, well, I don't see anything going on. Little wave right over here. This is Sunday um, going into next week, and it, it just stretches it out into an elongated tropical trough of low pressure. So I'm not really overly concerned about this system in the uh, Caribbean Sea, southern Gulf of Mexico. Keep an eye on this system, though. That, that could become Leslie, and we'll just have to keep an eye on that, see where it goes and so forth. All right, uh, going back to the um, Hats Weather and Nature page, I have information on there. I've been posting the power outages map and the tropical weather outlook. And looking at the forecast for the next several days, it's basically going to be dry around here. Slight chance of showers over the weekend, depending on where that tropical system, it looks more like a trough, a trough of low pressure, not a named storm uh, forming in the Gulf of Mexico. So I'm not overly concerned. You can see the probabilities of precipitation Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, only about 15 to 20% probabilities. Temperatures are going to be hot again for the next few days, but then cooling off a little bit down into the lower 80s to middle 80s. Uh, normal high for this time of the year now is around 80 degrees. So we're still riding above normal. But next week, it looks like we're going to be getting even cooler than that, dropping to the 70s for the high. All right. It, again, if you can, if you can, any financial aid to the hurricane victims, uh, uh, check out your favorite charity. And, and if you can, if you have the means, please donate, help these people. Thanks for watching. Bye.